Hi, we're back at the Sapphire booth. You saw this being built yesterday. It's now up and running. I'm joined by Bill, who's going to show us through some of the products. And we're going to start with this one, Bill, which we actually got a sneak preview of yesterday. Tell us exactly what this is. OK, so we're showing for the first time, uh, well, this is a pre-production version of our new CPU cooler. Uh, our VaporX technology was very successful in our range of graphics cards. It's basically using a vapor chamber to help to get the heat from the surface of the chip very quickly and then it's cooled by a, a heat pipe and fan arrangement. So we brought that technology now for the first time to a CPU cooler. Okay, it's a logical extension of your product range really. Now you're a big AMD partner, is this going to support Intel CPUs as well? Yeah, obviously we're going to supply it with universal fittings. Okay, so this is the first model. Are we going to see only one at launch or have you got a whole range in the works? Well, we're still a little bit away from launch. I think it's going to be a few weeks before we bring this one to market. But the plan is then to have a family. So we'll have a smaller uh, scaled down version, which will be suitable for products like the APU. Okay, and what's going to separate your coolers from what's already on the market? I mean, there's so many players out there. What's going to be special about the Sapphire coolers? Well, you know, our tradition has always been to aim for to be very quiet and very efficient. And the VaporX solution for our graphics cards was respected by the market for achieving that. We want to bring the same thing to the CPU cooler. It will be quiet, but very efficient. Okay, so noise levels are going to be a focus. This looks like a pretty high-end model. Are you going to stick to enthusiast users, or are you going to have complete top to bottom range? I don't think it'll be right top to bottom but certainly we want to bring something out which is physically smaller and suitable for the sort of mid-range devices like the APU families. Okay so those are your CPU coolers which are on the way. Now we've got something here which obviously everybody knows about, Sapphire graphics cards. Graphics cards, yeah. Three very meaty looking cards here. Tell us what these are. Well, let's go top to bottom because I think people have already seen that the 7970 has been very successful as an introduction, a uh, very powerful graphics processor, but obviously the original designs had a traditional blower cooler and were quite noisy. So we brought what we're calling our Dual X technology, that's a dual extractor technology, to the 7970 in this new overclock model which we're introducing here at the show. Okay, what kind of frequencies are we going to see on that card? Um, actually, I don't have the final clocks off the top of my head, but um, we're shipping overclocked out of the box. And of course, with this cooler, it allows people a lot more headroom to do overclocking as well. Okay. As you can see, it's a multiple heat pipe solution yep, with two aerodynamic pipes. fans. And um, it's, it's looking as though it's going to be pretty effective. OK, now we've tested this a, a variation of this cooler on the 7950OC. We've seen it performs really well. And you're also going to extend it to some of the lower end cards as well. That's right. Well, this dual X technology that we're saying, this multi-heat pipe dual fan solution, we've found to be very effective as a cooler. So when we introduce the 7870 OC edition, it'll also have a kind of little brother to that solution. So again, you'll see it's multiple heat pipes, dual fans, and enough space to get good airflow out of the case as well. Okay, and then the last, the baby of the three here. Well, the baby of the one? three is the new 7850. Um, obviously slightly lower clocks, I mean the, the 7870 is gigahertz and above, mm -hmm. so our OC will be overclocked above a gigahertz out of the box. But the um, 7850 ships at slightly lower clocks, slightly fewer stream processors, but hits more of a sweet spot on pricing in the market. Okay, this is actually a surprisingly small card. Um, our readers have actually commented on this, that this architecture, 28 nanometer, it's efficient. Do we need coolers this big? For standard Could that have been a single, well, single of course, these, these products are shipping uh, with core speeds in the order of a gigahertz, so you do have to get some heat away from there pretty quickly. So if you can make an efficient cooling system, you keep the noise levels right down. Okay, from Sapphire's point of view, what do you think the graphics card customer is looking for? We see these designs so often, dual slot, nice big cooler, low temperatures. What do you think is most important? Is it temperature? Is it noise? Is it size? Or is it power consumption? Well, well you know, a combination of them all. Well, it's horses for courses, of course. You know, the mainstream user is less interested in having these big, beefy coolers because he's not really doing overclocking or even putting very heavy demands on his card. But if you're doing something like rendering or playing games where you are putting a heavy load on the card, if you want to keep the noise levels down, you have to have a really efficient cooler. And that's what we're striving towards. OK, and are all three of these available right now? Um, basically launching at the show and obviously we'll be shipping out to the channel over the coming weeks. Great, okay, well those are Sapphire's new graphics cards. We'll have a review on at least one of these in the very near future, so check back for that on Hexus.